I'm Howard Wilson. I was involved in the uh, uh, work of the EV1 development, and before that, the Sunraiser. Um, most people don't know, but the EV1 really was a uh, outcome of the Sunraiser project. The, uh, the Sunraiser project uh, was a uh, solar car race, and it ran from Darwin uh, to Adelaide, across the outback of the uh, Australian continent. And it was uh, initiated by a fellow by the name of Hans Solstrup. So we set up the car race, which he called the uh, Solar Challenge. And uh, <clears throat> he sent out invitations to all the uh, companies and, and institutions that he could think of to uh, come and be involved in this race. Uh, one of the invitations came to Gen General Motors. I should uh, stop for a moment and tell you that I worked for Hughes for four years, Hughes Aircraft, for 40 years. And in 1985, Hughes was purchased by General Motors because uh, they wanted to get, incorporate some of the aerospace technology in their uh, automobile business. And uh, so the invitation was sent to the CEO of, uh, of General Motors. And uh, at that time, my job was the, the uh, technical coordinator between GM and Hughes to uh, pursue various technological programs that might be useful for the automotive field. Uh, this invitation that uh, uh, he received came to my desk as a result of that. didn't have any instructions with it like look into this or should we do this or anything. There was the invitation. So I looked at the invitation uh, and uh, it occurred to me that the uh, combination of what would have to be done for a solar car, the uh, solar cells, for example, and other technology, and on the other side, the automotive skills that exist in General Motors could be put together at great benefit and that there would uh, be a, a, a real uh, coup for us to do that in a successful way. So I, uh, I went back to General Motors and talked to the executives there and uh, asked if I could have uh, some money, $75,000, to do a study on whether we could do this or not. And so they quickly agreed to that. And uh, I went back and uh, fortunately, early on, I found out that uh, Paul McCready who was the head of a company called Aero Environment. You may remember him. He's, his company made the first man-powered airplane that could maneuver, actually, by, by manpower. <laughs> and uh, he was very much interested in this. And he had just exactly the right kind of small little company that he could work on this kind of a project. So um, uh, he had agreed and we worked up some preliminaries. We went back to General Motors again and propose that we do the whole job. And uh, without too much objection, they agreed. It didn't cost too much in their, in their category. <laughs> and they, uh, we began to work on the Sunraiser. We only had about uh, seven months to design and build it. And uh, so we, uh, we successfully uh, built the Sunraiser and uh, we uh, took it to Australia. And uh, we won the race. In Australia, 2,000 kilometers, 2,000 miles, I guess. Um, the race took uh, five and a half days to complete, and we we were ahead by two and a half days. <laughs> so we had a pretty decisive win. The, the interesting to talk about that race for a moment. The way the way it worked was that everybody started out. Uh, at a given hour, I think eight, eight o'clock is what it was, and at five o'clock they, they stopped, and uh, you had a camp where we had landed, so you had tents or sleeping bags or whatever you you wanted. You had to had to worry about having food preparation and all that, but uh, it uh, you didn't go to some <laughs> stopping place in the motel. You you just uh, stopped right there. And then, then you got uh, uh, either a half.
half hour or an hour to charge the battery after you stopped or before you started. So the early morning sun and you get the late afternoon sun. But other than that, there was no other electricity added to it, no charging of the batteries from any other source. All the battery charge for the entire race had to come from the sun. Um, when we came back from that uh, race, the thing we realized that is that uh, the same approach that we took on the Sun Racer, which was to absolutely minimize all uh, drag, aer aerodynamic drag, uh, mechanical drag, to improve the efficiency of every part in, in the car was the key to the, the whole thing. And uh, we realized that those same, that same approach could be applied to an electric vehicle for general use. And uh, so we uh, wrote a proposal to uh, General Motors that they uh, let us build the, uh, what was called in those days, <laughs> the impact. We proposed to them, wasn't that we build a car for production or we build a car they would build several of, what we wanted to do was to build a demonstrator that would demonstrate how these principles applied to a car could actually give the kind of performance and, and uh, battery life and so forth that you'd like to have, or would be at least adequate. <laughs> uh, so uh, it didn't take long again for them to let us go ahead and do that. And uh, so, uh, during that next year, which I guess was 1990, I can't remember exactly, uh, we uh, designed and built the uh, EV1 instead of the Impact, as it's, it's called. And uh, it was, uh, it came out so well uh, that the um, CEO of uh, General Motors thought it would be important for us to, to, to show it in the uh, LA Auto Show uh, in, in January of that year, I guess it was. And so that's where it went. It, it received such attention at the Auto Show that the decision was made very quickly that they would make, make more of them, at least make a, a, a um, beginning run. And so the car was redesigned, uh, not seriously, but I mean, I should say designed for production. The various parts that were in it had to be each made so that it could be manufactured. And, and the first one we made by that was a consideration. So the, um, the car became the uh, EV1. I suppose it's obvious, electrical vehicle one, you know. My, my contribution to the project was the name. <laughs>